far to the southernmost territories of Ashfeld, in a hidden arena where only the most wealthy and powerful of the knights might congregate, there is a coliseum called the Ring of Glory. Here, slaves and convicts are chosen to fight and battle in public displays. These slaves and convicts become gladiators, fighting for the glory of a spectating crowd. When Chimera established itself under Holden Cross's leadership, he was not pleased to learn that the Colosseum was still operational. The idea that warriors were being wasted in mere blood sports instead of joining a war effort was disconcerting, so he tried to shut down the fights. However, the feudal lord who owned the territory in which the Ring of Glory rested, known as Adoran, was a crafty one. He feigned compliance, but refused to lose one of his best forms of revenue. Bribing the right lawbringers, stealing and kidnapping slaves and children from territories outside of his own in the dead of night, and planning carefully when fights take place, he's able to keep the Ring of Glory open. But Adoran had to be very careful. He couldn't afford to be picky about his slaves. Even a sickly girl would be enough. Maria of the Iron Slopes was only about 15 years old when she was kidnapped by a soldier in the dead of night. Maria didn't want to go, but her parents apparently had made that choice for her. The soldier, it seems, had agreed to pay for her, and the parents were willing. They could barely feed themselves, and with the right money, they could potentially move to a more fertile land. Upon hearing about this, Maria was heartbroken and distraught, abandoned and sold off by her own family for money. Anger and despair filled her heart as she was dragged away to the Colosseum. She was thrown into a dirty cell with three other slaves, two boys her age, named Leon and Actos. Adoran approached the three children and wrinkled his nose. I don't have enough money for three of you. Maria knew he was lying, but she also knew she was at his mercy. I will bring food in an hour, but only enough for two. In that time, one of you will be dead. If I come back to see three of you alive, then none of you will eat. It was her first test. Their first test. Who would survive? Who would eat? The minute Adoran left, Actos rose to his feet and grabbed a rock from the ground, marching towards Maria. What are you doing? Leon demanded. One of us needs to die. Then let it be the girl. She's sick anyway. She dies now and we both live. It's not right, Leon argued. We need to think about this. I don't want to kill anyone. Then you're weak too. You both are. I'll just kill both of you and eat both of your meals. I, ah! His next words did not leave his lips. No other words escaped his mouth ever again. When Akhtar had turned to shout at Leon, Maria had grabbed a sharp rib bone which she was sitting on from a previous occupant and thrust it between his own ribs like a knife. I am not weak, she hissed. The choice had been made. As Maria stood over her first kill, Leon stared at her in fear. Will you kill me too? He pleaded. Maria shook her head. No. No, I won't. Adoran was pleased, very pleased. He hired doctors to treat Maria's sickness. He fed them, fed them well, trained them, gave them armor and equipment. Leon and Maria slowly grew as gladiators and as comrades. The two ate together, fought together, even bathed together. Leon often spoke to Maria of religious things as his parents served the Church of Ashba before their death in a battle with the samurai. Maria never understood much of what he told her, but she enjoyed listening to him, and he loved watching her fight. Leon learned so much, as much as he could from Maria, though he never quite could become quite as ruthless. The two were near inseparable. When one was hurt, the other would tend to them. Sharing food and water was common between them, and their laughs filled the cells that the other gladiator slept in. The Colosseum felt jovial for many of the slaves trapped there. As three years ticked by, the two were some of the strongest and most impressive gladiators in the ring for their age. By the time they were reaching 19 years old, they had earned their monikers. Leon the Gentle, for he always showed compassion to his opponent, and Maria the Serpent, for she was known to move around the battlefield like a coiling snake, striking at the heels and toes of her enemies, holding them in place as she would strike them to the ground. But Adoran began to grow nervous about Leon. Gladiators were great for spectacles, but strong gladiators he could sell to local knight legions to fuel the war effort and to make a lot of coin. But to do that, the gladiators had to be killers, vicious and merciless. Leon was certainly not a killer, so Adoran spoke to Leon, telling him that in his next fight it would be a fight to the death. The audience demanded blood, but Leon refused. 
He would prefer to merely subdue his enemy and win. He wanted no part in the killing. But Adoran was clear. If Leon did not kill, then he would die. Maria pleaded with Leon to kill, to break his code just once. But Leon was firm. He could not kill a fellow man. It had never been his goal to be a warrior or a knight. He simply wanted to be a monk, not a murderer for spectacle. Maria feared for Leon until the day came he would fight his death match. Leon walked to the center of the arena to await his foe, only for Adoran to call out the name he least wanted to hear. Maria the Serpent! Maria walked down to the arena, pale and sweating, and Leon looked equally horrified. He started to turn to argue, but Adoran spoke first. Only one will leave this arena alive, he declared. You will kill or be killed. And if we refuse, Maria challenged. To answer her question, a line of archers standing on the highest balcony seats of the Colosseum raised their bows. The order was clear. They would kill each other, or the archers would kill them both. Begin! Maria took her stance and began to bob and weave. She was ready. She would find an opening. But Leon just stood there, staring at her through his helmet, processing everything. Leon! Leon, you must fight! I can fight you, Maria, but I, I can't kill you! You must! Maria cried, rushing him to impale him. He dodged her and swung his fist, but Maria ducked it. She struck at his knee. He took that blow, but he repaid her with a sucker punch to her jaw. But even in that punch, Maria felt his hesitance. The fear. Leon, I... I, I don't... I can't. She struggled to find the resolve to kill him. Leon stared at her again with those deep, golden brown eyes like honey. The crowd began to boo and hiss as they both just stared at each other. Adoran stood up angrily. Fight, you vermin! I told you to fight! The people demand blood! The people cheered their agreement, and the archers rose to their feet. Maria twisted her ankles in the dirt and bit her lip till her tongue tasted blood. They would fire those arrows if she didn't act. They would kill them. But Leon... Maria, Leon whispered, I'm sorry about this. Without warning, the trident Leon held hurled past her head. Maria gasped as the weapon flew by her, and she raised her trident reflexively, just as Leon threw himself into it, as if running to embrace the weapon. Maria gasped as blood burst from Leon's mouth as he impaled himself on her blade. Losing her grip on the shaft, the weapon dropped, and Leon fell into her chest, his head resting just on her breastplate. Leon! she screamed. The Don Gladiator chuckled behind his helmet as she cradled his head in her arms. Leon! You bastard! Why? <coughs> you... You aren't weak. You aren't weak, Maria. Like me, he whimpered. <coughs> you're... You're strong, Maria. Stronger than I am. I'm... So glad I... Glad I could... Die... Next. Don't die, Maria pleaded. Don't die, Leon. Hold on. Uh, I, I love you. Leon didn't finish his confession. His words died on his lips as his head sank into the lap of Maria. And as the audience threw roses and flowers raining down upon Maria's head from the awestruck and excited news of the death of one of the gladiators, Maria threw off her helmet bawling over the loss of her friend. And it seems we have a winner, Adoran announced. And now we silence, Maria screamed, hugging Leon to her chest. Be silent. Don't you cheer. None of you cheer. The crowd fell silent. Even Adoran stopped. The archers looked confused. What were they to do now? Maria kissed the head of Leon and then stood again, picking up his fallen trident. She then turned her dead steel eyes upon Adoran. There is no winner or loser yet. There hasn't been enough blood! She hurled the trident like a javelin into the stand, striking Adoran square in the chest. 
The ruler of the Colosseum screamed, gurgled in agony as the weapon was plunged deep into him. The crowd screamed in horror and then in elation, their bloodlust satisfied. Maria grabbed up her own weapon and roared at the heavens. Slavers ran out from their purchase to restrain her and she held them off for a whole hour, protecting the body of Leon. A few archers finally found their nerve and managed to strike her hip and leg with a few well-shot arrows. She was finally restrained, dragged away to her cell, and whipped repeatedly until the lashes in her back couldn't stop bleeding. But through every lash she did not scream. She only wept. Wept at her own weakness, her inability to save Leon, the man who had given his life to save hers. You killed your master, slave, the slaver bellowed. You'll die for this crime, but it will be slow. You'll receive no food, and we'll whip you every day until you die from the agony or from starvation. Just hurry up and do it, she bellowed. Kill me, you bastards! Five days after the death of Leon, Holden Cross finally received word of the Colosseum's activities and the death of Adoran. Taking a detachment from the Khmer Alliance, he rode out to investigate and found the site. All of the slavers were either arrested or banished. The gladiators were freed and offered the chance to fight for Chimera or to go home and start a new life for themselves. But one woman, chained to a wall with scars all along her back, did not move when Holden approached her. Are you the one they call Maria? he asked. No answer. I was told what became of your friend and what was asked of you. She still did not answer or look at Griffin. I'm not going to bore you with some speech, but I'm going to offer you a choice. You can go make a home for yourself here in Ashfeld, or you can join the Chimera Alliance. We could use strong warriors like you. Strong, Maria finally whispered. But I'm not strong. I'm weak. I didn't have the strength to save him, or the strength to die when I failed. And now's your chance, Griffin snapped, tossing her a knife. If all you want to do is die, then slit your throat and stop wasting time. But if you ask me, I don't think it would honor that friend of yours to let his sacrifice be in vain. And what do you know about Leon? I know about sacrifice and redemption, Griffin countered. I wanted to die too once, but death isn't going to fix the problems we face. You want to pay back your fallen comrade? And take up arms and fight for him. Lay down your life protecting someone instead of mocking his actions by wanting to kneel over and die like a weakling. Maria screamed and struck Griffin across the face, sending him reeling back. His Chimera supporters moved to aid him, but he waved them off, rubbing his cheek in pain. Maria was breathing heavily, anger in her eyes. Ugh. Feel better? <sighs> yeah. Loads, Maria hissed. <laughs> you got a strong right hook, Griffin chuckled, holding out his hand. Want to take a swing at someone worth hitting? Maria joined the Chimera Alliance that day. In the arena of Feronia, no competitor could match her bravado. She fought like a warrior with something to prove. She danced around the arena like a snake waiting to strike, and when she did, the results were devastating. The current arena champion, Toby Maru, the Shugoki, attempted to match her, and she struck him so hard in the face his mask broke. When she was finally called to battle, she broke ranks faster than any other warrior, plunging herself into the fray against the Horkos warriors. Her trident seeking new victims to bleed and her buckler hunting for a face to pound. Her laughter and taunts drove Horkos warriors mad with rage, but she was quick to deliver swift and punishing death to any and all who fell for her taunts and jeers. Her smile was one of mirth, but also arrogance. She was brutal, and she showed it in her combat skills. Now, some in Chimera believed Maria still was seeking death, rushing headlong into battle as if seeking her demise, and perhaps that was part of it. But Holden, like a few others, suspected something else. Leon had saved Maria by giving her the freedom to live, and now she was making the most she could with that freedom. But she wasn't strong like Leon who had the strength to save lives instead of take them. So until she could find that strength in herself, 
She would simply do what she could in this war to ensure that the future would be a little brighter for people like Leon. Maria was a gladiator out to save a life. Enemy team is breaking. 